All right, we're back finally. Sorry for that long delay, but this is modern. What are we expecting? Okay, so back in there here, uh, we're going to see another tribal deck taking advantage of new cards this round. We have uh, Nerd Rage Mainstay Matt Hoey playing Is It Murktide versus Greg Ron playing Goblins. Ooh. With, uh, and there is Runevelt Horde Master in the deck, so that's the new Goblin Lord. Yeah, if we can actually get that in the middle here, I don't know which way to point. Everything is the wrong direction. But if we could pull Runevent Hordemaster up so that people can see this great new goblin as we're slowly getting more and more of these tribal cards printed mm -hmm. in the new set, getting added on to these, these modern decks. And so far we've seen fish have some good performances, fish have some bad performances, yeah. and now it's goblin's turn to step up to the plate. Yeah, so another two mana one one lord, which is un undersized, you know, for historically for lords, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, a fairly useful ability here. Works well with well combat, but also just with uh, skirt prospector sacrificing your goblins to be able to play off the top. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if Greg Ron is able to put that to work in addition to the Barger Harbinger type combo uh, and other sorts of value engines that are normally present in the Goblin decks. And then Matt Hoey playing Blur and Murktide. Well, no real surprises there. This this deck does what it does. It's good. And it does pack removal. And <clears throat> Goblins is a deck where, well, we'll see if going into somewhat longer game, whether the card advantage built into some of the Goblins is able to overcome the pinpoint removal. So if the players are ready, we can go into the table. Becky, yeah. I just was, you're talking about like if this card advantage is going to be enough to deal with the removal and also keep up with the level of card advantage that the Is It Murktide deck sure. has as well. So yeah. this could be kind of a rough matchup for this Goblins deck, but it'll be definitely interesting to see because I think that this is a place where Is It Murktide can start to kind of falter if you do have to play against something that is just so aggressive that you can't keep up it does get pretty difficult for you to stay on the board and able to commit things that are important to you winning the game as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So starting off with a Sokin's on and then an Ether Vial. And no one likes, you know, I was going to say no one likes the real versions of cards, but I suppose, you know, most players are younger <laughs> than I am. Maybe these are the real versions for them. Honestly, that is pretty true. I was recently uh, basically organizing two huge magic collections and was like, okay, if I'm organizing things based on set, like, am I going for the original set printing or the set printing that I actually have when I'm organizing these cards? And I ended up just going with like the printings that I have. Cause a lot of these older cards, I just don't actually have mm -hmm. unless I've gone out of my way to get them. And in the meantime, like I'm just going to use the versions that I have. So it was an interesting decision to, be like this card has a much older printing how am i organizing it into my collection mm -hmm. yeah sure organizing collections a tall task for anyone who's been playing for a long time something that's and then oh, the frustrating thing is like even if you organize it in a year it's going to be a mess again anyway exactly yeah some new sets are going to come out you're going to get new boxes and then all of a sudden all of your hard work is out the window so yeah props to people who have organized collections and have like easy ways to add to their collections i know a lot of people will just like keep a new binder for every single set and keep all the like good rare cards from that set that just came out in a binder or all of the quote-unquote playable cards in a binder there's a lot of different strategies i've tried a lot of them i find that eventually i just put a lot of things in 5ks and say if i need a card i'll end up going back and looking for it later in mm -hmm. the meantime this will have to work yeah Okay, so no early development here for either side, aside from the vial, but here is mm -hmm. Matt Hoy with a one drop Dragon Rage Challenger on turn three after a couple considers, which did put a Ragavan into the graveyard, so he wasn't interested in in that on turn three, but does find another one drop anyway. Graveyard is stocked up with all four considers, I think, are in the graveyard. It certainly, yep. Looks like all four are there. So we've considered a lot this game and considering the facts, Dragon Ridge Channeler seems like a good card. Yeah, but Munitions Expert for one here is going to try and take it out. There's no delirium at the moment. Uh, however, I believe if Matt is able to kill the Munitions Expert in response to this, it will shoot for zero unless Greg files in something for one. So yeah, there's some things in play here. 
as to is tricky because mm -hmm. probably Matt wouldn't be interested in wasting a burn spell on a munitions expert otherwise. Yeah, this is uh, going to be kind of interesting to see how this is going to end up going. And instead, it looks like it's just a counter spell. All right. So this is going to be your surveil dump a Ragavan. But yeah, I feel like this is a victory for Greg. I was um, going to say the same thing. I'm not too upset about that. Yeah. And oh. there is a... Yeah, I don't. I'm not Hold entirely on. sure. Actually, it's a, it's the actual it. Mog. I was like, I was, I was gonna say, what's the current version of Mog Fanatic? It, is Mog it actually Fanatic. is Mog Fanatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, there you go. That see, that is an old promo, an old DCI promo. I didn't recognize that as Mog Fanatic. No, neither did I. And that's a card I even know. But, but still, Matt. Ho or, sorry, Greg Ron is you know got all the cool stuff. Goblin Matron, though, that's a that's a familiar looking Goblin Matron. All yeah. right, so we're starting we're starting to be off to the races. It seems like we actually got to see Greg kind of like wait to see what Matt Hoey was going to try and commit to the board, what exactly was going to be the direction of this game. And now that some chips have kind of fallen into place, now trying to deploy things in. Hey, there's that new new goblin lord added yeah. to the mix. Rundvelt Hordemaster. Don't you know the name already? Come on, Becky. My bad. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's right. Yeah, Runevelt Horde Master. So, <clears throat> two mana, one, one. Pumps the rest of the team. And whenever a goblin dies, you can flip the top card and play it until the end of your next turn. So, it is somewhat forgiving in that if the creatures die in your opponent's turn, you still can untap and play them. My only real experience with this so far is in Pioneer, where I cast a sweeper against three goblins, including a Horde Master, and they had, it was, they had three land, and they flipped over three one-drops. So they just oh, no. immediately. And I was like, what is this nonsense? <laughs> but, you love to see it when it's you. And when your yeah. opponent does it, you're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So here's an 88 Murktide Regent. Greg runs at 16. So two swings will do it. Let's see if we can even get to that point as the Rune Belt Horde Master it does make its way onto the board. Yeah, this is. Uh, not going to be easy to remove. However, maybe Greg can go around it, or these modern Gobble decks do have combo wins, so maybe he can win uh, by ignoring it. We will have to wait and see. Yeah, we've got to amass quite a few goblins here to be able to pack a big punch but looking at the hand i feel like i see only one land and then i have to imagine that the other three are all goblins of some sort so what order are we trying to get things into play here as another goblin matron looks to be what's coming down to try and start this off mm -hmm. okay there's a snoop so the combo in the the goblin deck is that you you need to have at least my understanding, you have to have conspicuous snoop in play. I've never seen it without that. Mm -hmm. And then you can play. Uh, I believe you need to get your snoop in play, and then you need to have uh, Kiki Jiki on top of the deck, and the snoop can copy over and over again. And then you need to change the top. You either have Sling Yang Lieutenant or change the top card of the deck to be Sling, Sling, Sling Yang Lieutenant, which is easiest to achieve with Bogart Harbinger. Mm. And then leads to a win. Not there yet, but there's a War Marshal, which is a free play off the top. Okay, so this board is uh, developing now. Oh, yeah. And now, all of a sudden, this uh, Merc Tide Regent trying to swing might be a little bit of a rough situation. Yeah, potentially here. So there's really <clears throat> a couple of creatures that Matt Hoey might want to remove here. Be the Runeville Horde Master pumping everything, and then the Conspicuous Snoop allowing uh, next turn potentially be explosive. And yet, I don't know that... Well, Expressive Variation is a nice draw, but I don't know that Matt Hoey can just sit here and try and tr you know make trades with removal... I I feel like he might get overwhelmed. So I, he's incentivized to attack, I think. 
Ooh. It's just hard for me to believe that this deck won't be able to get off. Uh, now that we have a lightning bolt, okay. At least being able to take care of a lord helps out quite a bit. And I guess Matt mm -hmm. Hoey agrees with you. Is going to go for that attack, which should put Greg down to six here. And then right. okay. two lightning bolts. Yeah, well, that's one way to do it. That shock land for Greg put him in a somewhat vulnerable state. And wow. Yeah. No need for unholy heat choices on creatures when you have two bolts to just kill the player. And I guess, yeah, Mercury Regent, uh, two turn clock. Nah, one, one is going to fit for Matthew Hoey and, and pick up game one there. I mean, what a crazy way to end that one. Not how I expected it to go. The moment mm -hmm. that we had like that many goblins in play, I was like, oh, Greg's in a great spot. But I mean, if you've got a large Merktide region, two bolts, that's a lot of damage. And we committed it pretty easy, simple, clean. And let's take a look at deck lists. Let's see what Greg can change to maybe win the game a little bit faster or at least cause this Urza Merktide deck to stumble a little bit. Yeah. So there's a uh, fourth Boggart Harbinger on the board. That's interesting as it's one of the primary enablers of the combo that it's in the, not in the main or existent at all. Uh, but Sting Scourger at the board is a nice effect that can reset a Merktide Regent and a Warren Weirding. All right. This is this is a lot of like one of yeah, little sure cards is. in here. We're just trying to see exactly what is going to work for us here. Yeah, a few unlicensed hearse that can that can get the keep the Merktide off the board for a while. Yeah, okay, so there's definitely tools here for Greg Ron to work with. Let's take a look at the Merktide deck. It should be pretty stock compared to uh, this Rakdos Goblins deck anyway. Mm -hmm. And we'll see Engineered Explosives probably going to be maybe not exactly the board wipe that you're looking for against a Goblins deck, but you won't. I, I definitely wouldn't imagine it not coming in. The double right. negative that yeah. makes I mean, it definitely could. I mean, it, but. yeah, the uh, maybe subtlety comes in here as there are a lot of creatures that, you know, you can delay and throw back for the moment. That seems okay. Dress oh, down? Dress down? Dress down's all right. Uh, that's stopping fair. some of these goblin synergies, some of these goblin coming to play triggers. That seems okay. Uh, no real, not to me, home run cards here, but there's playable stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously, just on game one, just the main deck plan is often good. Counter spells not great against Ether Vile decks in general. So I was going to say that, and like the yeah. spell pierces probably aren't going to be staying in. So even just being able to bring in things like the dress down, where it's like, eh, it's not like the best card, but it is better than some of these other cards that are pretty much dead because spell pierce isn't doing a whole lot against the 34 creature deck. Right, yeah. So some confusion in the chat uh, when I was talking about Boggart Harbinger. Yeah, so there are the three copies of Boggart Harbinger in the main. There's also one copy in the sideboard, which is the part that I was referring to was somewhat surprising. Anyway, uh, players are presenting their decks. Let's go ahead and go down to the table and see if uh, Greg Gron can, can do a little better in game one here, make a little more progress early, or just not get smashed by a Murktide region all at once. Yeah, it looks like Greg definitely decided this is a good keep. We're just waiting to see if Matt feels the same way here. This may be a matchup where we've talked in the past about rag events being ported out against Hammer because they're just unlikely unlikely to connect. Mm -hmm. That may be the case here for Matthew Hoey, rag events against Goblins, especially going second. Uh, rag event, even if it trades, okay, maybe. But if it, you know, if it's facing out something like Mog War Marshal, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> Very so. true. There's a bobble to start off. Took a look at the top of Greg's deck. And we are just going to go ahead and pop the Zether Vial up to one and really see if we can start things rolling for these goblins. Well, there is a copy of Spell Snare in Matthew Hoey's deck, I believe. So. Maybe there's an answer, and we do see the subtlety got boarded in. And there's Runvel Tordmaster to get things going. We have Spell Snare. I mean, what you really want when you're trying to pressure the opponent is a 1-1 one, one on turn 2, right? Yeah. 
and not going to subtlety either. So just going to pass the turn. You know, that one Renfell Tord Master, not the scariest. And then we are going to see that Mog Fanatic come down as well. And this now we're now we're likely going to be seeing some some attacking and see if we can get something going we didn't really get to see any attacking from this deck last game uh -uh. so eager to see what explosive actions we can make on this game where we've started off on the play all right so you attack here matt holy goes to just life total and greg ron's like hold on hold on <laughs> and then file in another runeveld horde master <clears throat> so this actually i uh five point hit there despite two natural one ones being on the board and well there's a lot of potential for for well not technically drawing but seeing a lot of cards in the future turns i mean even this mog fanatic can sacrifice and flip two cards for on the two hun masters yeah board masters sorry I said that, and I was thinking to myself, like, that didn't sound right. What did I just say? <laughs> no, you're good. If people in chat are like, a hunt master isn't in the goblins deck, uh, whatever. <laughs> good for you, I guess. All right, so Greg, just his fingers tapping on the table there, considering something here. This That looks like something you would kind of do if you were considering how much, you know, I'm going to do something real nasty here to Matthew Hoey. <laughs> and let me make sure the mana works. Uh, Matt with not very many red cards in hand, which is generally the color, color of removal when you're playing Murktide. So be a free reign here for Greg Ron for the moment. Yeah, I mean, especially with Matt tapped out, just trying to figure out what is going to be the amalgamation of spells in the turn that leads to the most pain. Well, anything with haste is going to be problematic here. There is, there are a few haste creatures in the deck. There's one war chief and two ringleaders and two key jikis, although <clears throat> that's not known for its attacking prowess. But going to try and get some attacking in anyway. Ooh, are we just not going to? Hmm. I mean, seven damage is not nothing. That's true. And you have to imagine that we can find a way to commit a little bit more damage so that the next attack will be lethal. And that is going to be off of activating an Aether Vial on our turn. Okay, so Bar Harbinger, 2-1 Black Goblin that top deck tutors. So Sling Gang Lieutenant is now Ooh. going to be the top card of the deck. And Greg is going to go ahead and shoot Matt with <clears throat> Mog Fanatic for one damage, which is going to trigger the two Hun Masters. So the top two cards are going to flip over, and goblins among them can be played. Well, here is a Slinging Lieutenant. And one, two, three, four, five. I believe this is going to put six goblins on the board total. Slinging Lieutenant allows any goblin to be sacrificed to drain for one, mm -hmm. as you can see there. So Matt Hilly is hanging on at one life effectively here. Yeah. Oof. But so far, I don't think the math adds up for the game to be over, but it, well, it's going to be enough for Matt to say, if I can't even fetch a land, right? <clears throat> I am not going to be in a good position this game and calls it over. So goblins do manage to take that second game. And get us to game number three here. How do we feel about game number four now that we got to see like a little bit of the sideboarding and how that game went, especially putting the Rakdos Goblins deck on the draw? Do you think that's going to really hinder them at all? Or do you think it'll I end mean, up being okay? I mean, that, that game didn't get going too quickly. I, I don't know. I, I kind of like this, the cards that Goblins was able to bring to board in, even though mm -hmm. we didn't really see them there. I don't hate... The goblin's position here being able to tutor up the um sorry i lost the name of it crater the, no that, that's not it sting scourger to re, to bounce a murtide i mean that's the best blocker the blue red deck can muster and the ability to tutor up and then get it out of the way i don't know uh we, we saw what a weird a, ability for a red card yeah sure 
we saw a uh, kind of an unusual game there from Ahoy not drawing any removal. Mm -hmm. uh, against that's a, true. Against a tribal deck. I mean, that's not where you want to be. But it's not like he's got big sweepers in the sideboard to net significant card advantage. And then there's two um, Runefelt Hunt, 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 Horde Masters. Horde Masters. Gosh. Man, struggling on that Goblins one. Goblins are about hoarding, not hunting. Yeah. No. I, I uh, yeah. I'm not even <laughs> saying hunt master i'm saying like hun because it's run oh, belt. So i'm saying like i see hun master even though that's not a word or a name so it's just nothing but that's what i'm defaulting to apparently no it's uh, okay now that you've explained it like that like my brain does the exact same thing sometimes and it just becomes like a tongue twister yeah so i i understand all right cool so now we've got that straightened out on why i'm going to further mispronounce this card let's go down to the table for <laughs> for game three Nice start off with that Misty being able to get two different lane or two colors from one land. For everyone's reference, is it Murktide is going to be the second most popular deck of this tournament. Uh, I think you all could probably take your bets at what is the most popular archetype. Is it Narcon to it because that's what I was hoping to see today. Uh, yep, that's definitely it. Joe's oh, completely right. All right, Skirk. Uh, prospector off of a that's a cavern of souls right that looks to be a cavern of souls i believe yeah all right and i consider for matthew hoey on his second turn so the number one deck in the field is in fact four color to the surprise of mostly no i'm one. asking oh it is yes it is actually <laughs> four color <laughs> I just assumed that everyone would understand that Yorian four color blink was going to be the most popular deck. Yeah. Uh, literally until Yorian gets banned. And even then that deck is probably still powerful enough with 60 cards that you find some way to play it. Mm -hmm. All right. So Matt with a hand this time, a little more well distributed on cards. He's got an iteration, a Murktide Regent and a removal spell as well as some lands. So this, should develop a little smooth in the last game and have a little, few more answers. So here's Unholy Heat on a Skirt Prospector, which throughout history of goblins, I'm sure they were generally happy to have that, bolts thrown at their one drops, aside from lackeys, which are not present here, obviously. <laughs> but it's definitely going to be a little more rough when we don't have an ether file in play mm -hmm. to help kind of cheat us on extra turns here it looks like snoop gonna come into play but closer we to delirium here well let's see we've got land instant one away yeah oh there we go well yeah that'll give matt <clears throat> the ability to attack and i do think he's kind of racing here yeah, I would see as the moment that you don't see an ether vial come down. I imagine, like, if you have a creature and potentially another creature is back up, it does just become a race. Mm -hmm. Oh, has the spell snare in hand this time as well. And that's a one of in the deck. That's nice. That cavern's gonna have something to say about that. But yep, the subtlety can get through the cavern or get bypass the cavern's protection. So that will work in Matt's favor. I'm sure he would ideally like to hard cast. The subtlety, but we may not get to that point. Eggers can't be chooses. Boy, Greg Ron's got different arts of multiple cards in his deck. Here's a second Cavern of Souls on top of the deck. Well, okay, scratch that. That's getting shuffled away. Yeah, and we might end up, because of this cavern, just seeing the spell snare pitch cast to the subtlety if push comes to shove here. With Snoop in play, if it's a cheap goblin, you can't even effectively subtlety it because it could just be replayed. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Greg is going to need to get something going here. Bloodstained Mire on the top. Goblin Matron doesn't cost two, so that spell snare not going to be able to do too much. But we do have that subtlety, and I have to imagine that we're thinking, is it worth stopping that for a turn 
And if if we are saying that this is a race situation, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it might be. I think it comes down to what Matt plans on doing next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if he if he's going to make his fourth land drop, hard casting subtlety seems pretty good. If that's unlikely to happen, I mean, he would just plan on casting Murktide and then using Dress Down. So he's going to consider first here because he doesn't have the land in hand. So he can find out now whether he's going to make the land drop or not. So I like this, gaining more information before making your choice. Ooh. Okay, so that was the surveil from consider. And then <clears throat> I'm not sure what... Oh, this is the consider itself, right? Yeah. I think we're, yeah, the subtlety into the graveyard was the surveil, as you mentioned, and now we are... Yeah. And he did draw the fourth land. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Matron is going to resolve. So then Matt, next turn, will have the choice of Murktide and Hold Up Dress Down or Hard Cast Subtlety. <clears throat> Right. Meanwhile, yeah. We we still have to. Okay. Ooh, Stinger is going to be the pickup. It looks like so. Definitely anticipating that there is something like that dragon that we've been talking about. Yeah, I like through. that, but it is very much not going to work. Yeah, because that's not in Matt Hoey's hand. Well, no, no, it is. But the dress down, I'm saying, the, the mm. Murktide with dress down is going to mean the Sing Scourger doesn't actually do anything. Very fair. So three across here. Left little still not making too much progress. And yeah, so here is Murktide. And... Yeah, Greg's plan here of Sting Scourger, an uncountable Sting Scourger is great, and it's going to be foiled, and then I think he's going to be in trouble. Yeah. We'll see if that's exactly how this is going to play out, or if Greg has the heads up moments thought to think, hmm, why would Matt Howie play it this way? We'll see. But that certainly could end up being disastrous for Greg. And that dragon is a big blocker. So a lot of action just kind of starts to go out the window now. Yeah. And if if Greg has a fourth land here, I mean, uncounterable Sting Scourger could just be recast off the top by Snoop. But mm -hmm. the... Dress down is just going to mess that all up. Yep. All right. There's another prospector. <laughs> oh, this is. I feel like Greg is like starting to feel like, oh, what is happening? Where does this potentially go wrong here? Okay, plays off the top. I think that is that a war marshal? I believe so. All right, not using the cavern. And then I guess, we're, okay, this is a, a good play by Matthew Hoey. It's just he knows about the Sting Scourger, but he's just going to run out the dress down right now because hmm. to negate the war marshal token. Okay. And it's not like Greg can then after this play the Sting Scourger because the dress down's still going to be played all turn and then so Matt will just get his attack in. And that might be all he needs. Yeah, and I like just going ahead and not holding on to this as well because it definitely feels like if you held on to this for any continued amount of time. I don't know. You're saying I might as well use the mana this turn, be able to draw a new card, have the subtlety as well that like doesn't play super nice but hopefully mm -hmm. a big attack on this next turn as you mentioned is going to be enough 
to put yeah. things into Matt Hoey's favor. Land instant creature sorcery in the graveyard. So Dragon Rage in. Yep, here we go. That's nine damage coming across. Yeah, do we have a bolt? Not this time. Scalding Tarn. Did in game one. <clears throat> but there is a subtlety on their hand. Okay, so we got War Marshal that's got Echo here. I think, unless the dress down somehow interacted with the echo, but I doubt that. Hmm. I don't, I've never considered this before. Is echo a come into play effect of, of a creature or is it? Um, yeah. Okay. yeah There's a dress we... call going on right now. Probably about exactly this. I would agree. Um, so I think my perception is Greg Ron forgot and then realized he didn't pay the echo, but I'm actually not sure he has to. Yeah, it does say at the beginning of your upkeep, so I don't. What's the hmm. phrasing? I think your upkeep the uh, turn after playing it. Or... If this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep. Okay. Okay. So that sounds like that would bypass that. Just that wouldn't. Wouldn't have any impact it work on that. with it? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm inclined to agree, but this could be a place where like one of these words ends up mattering in a way that I'm unexpecting of it too. I mean, certainly there have been rules and interactions that have caught me by surprise in the past. So this wouldn't be the first time. But yeah, it does not seem like it would have a role to the play here. We'll see. Our players are talking to a judge, so hopefully uh, it'll get figured out, and then we'll also get to learn here, figure mm -hmm. out exactly how this <clears throat> interacts. Dress down. Cause for a lot of uh, interesting judge calls. But once we uh, move our way through this, so with Boggart Harbinger on top of the deck, and Snoop in play, mm -hmm. as long as there's enough mana available to cast it twice because subtlety will take it out the first time. I that I believe that's a win for Greg Ron. And I think there is. I think there's a, with four mana, with four land, mm -hmm. the War Marshal token, and the matron alongside the prospector. I think there is enough. So now I haven't seen this combo play out in a while, but I don't believe it takes anything beyond that. Yeah, we're about to find out. And it yeah, looks so like that's what between. Greg is gonna go for. Yep. And I think this is the only relevant step here because nothing else has to be cast. Okay, so this is on the stack and reveals the top card. I think Greg Ron's going to steal this game. Um, suddenly we haven't seen... Suddenly just throws a card on top of the deck, right? Or Please. a creature or planeswalker that's on the stack goes on top of the deck? Or... Uh, yeah, choose up to one target creature spell or planeswalker spell. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom. Right. But I imagine you're going to, if that's a big combo piece, you kind of want it on uh, on the top. Yeah, so I think this... Uh... I, I think this is just going to be an execution of Greg's combo here, and I think Matt is going to lose this game. Wow. Which uh, was looking, maybe not over with but certainly favorable because it didn't look super likely he was going to get attacked to death this turn mm -hmm. wow okay so harbinger is going to tutor up war and weirding which is that's the <laughs> edict effect for yeah. goblins um it's a goblin tribal spell. Yeah, sorcery. Um, yep, there we go. If a goblin sacrifice this way, that player puts two 1-1 one, one black goblins into play. So we can just make a ton of mana off of our Skirk Prospector being in play. What is... Uh, sorry, I'm... Okay. Uh... All right, so... So, sorry, I got, I got confused multiple times about three <laughs> seconds there. Um, so this Warren Weirding is going to be cast, and it's going to reveal on top of the deck 
munitions expert, which so the players just bumped fists there, huh? And we're spell snaring the Warren weirding. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and so Matt Ho is going to win the game with the or all right. I <laughs> I'm a little confused. <laughs> I am going to put it out there. It is possible that I misunderstood how. I mean, it's not like I've seen the 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 goblin combo go off, you know, every other day or even every month. Yeah. But my understanding of how, well, not understanding, I've seen this happen before. I feel like I Greg against, won though, based on is, how yeah, body okay. language is. So, Oh, Matt won. So, okay. Yeah, so well, Matt, no, we did yeah Matt clearly won that game. He spells okay. the word I'm reading, but sure. the the the. <laughs> confusion that is i'm sure very clear in my voice is why didn't greg win because okay so we have conspicuous snoop on the board mm -hmm. we cast Bogger harbinger we put kiki jiki on top of the deck our snoop becomes a kiki jiki it's not summoning sick we activate it make a copy do this twenty-seven thousand times or whatever your favorite number is then we copy the on the last activation you copy Bogger harbinger again Make the top card of your deck Sling Gang Lieutenant and drain your opponent for that number. That's what I expected to happen there. Uh, some that people is, are in fact, suggesting, not what happened. Yeah, some people are suggesting that maybe Kiki Jiki comes out in this, but that seems so. I thought that about seems that. weird. If you have Cavernous Souls in your deck, I feel like you just don't care yeah. about people having counters. Right. So right. I don't know. All right. Well, let's. We're gonna go to the backup match, uh, and <laughs> maybe and, things will be a little more clear in that get world. Get this started, and uh, I'm not gonna lie. A, a decent portion of the beginning of the backup match commentary might be me trying to digest what happened in the previous game, which is watched. <laughs> but let's go ahead and roll the backup match. So we've got Michael Aquino with Burn against Ashlyn Johnson on Grixis Death Shadow. Okay, so our first meeting with Grixis Death Shadow this morning. Uh, was not much of a showing. Yeah, I know it had to play against four color, which I think Grixis Death Shadow is hard pressed to play against a deck that is playing that a certain white elemental. Sure. Well, yeah, not only that, in one of the games, for those of you that weren't here this morning, the Death Shadow deck got stuck on two lands with at least one and maybe two Death Shadows in hand at 14 life and just passed the turn Oof. casting, I think, every counter in their deck over the next four turns, but with no board presence and then ends up dying. So we'll see if Ashlyn Johnson can do a little bit better with Grixis Death Shadow. Playing its burn here. So this is historically the matchup where like does how does burn you know pace their spells when mm -hmm. Grixis Death Shadow is trying to do damage to itself anyway. It does end up being a little bit difficult, but also does have a lot of spot removal as well, which tends to make it difficult to kind of eke out damage in a nice at a nice pace for the burn deck mm -hmm. so we saw there we just saw bolt to the dome and ignoring the dragon challenger which okay it makes perfect sense when you have mm -hmm. searing blades to follow up so michael aquino off to a good start here ashlyn johnson down to 11. Not a place she's going to particularly mind being in, being put into range of casting Death Shadows right away. Yeah, very true. But, I mean, equally as the burn deck has to figure out exactly how to deal those last few points of damage. There's a Bloodstained Mire that's white-bordered, I Yeah, believe. for a second I thought that was a Sulphur <laughs> Springs because it was white-bordered. I was like, oh, pain lands in <laughs> Death Shadow, I guess. No, that I, I honestly yeah. kind of makes sense. Um, but it is actually a Bloodstained Mire, so it is going to fetch up a Water Grave, and we are going to go ahead and deploy that Death Shadow now that... Wow, oh, might as well get two now that they're both out of Bolt range. All right. Now, this is not by any means... I mean, Ashton way ahead on the board, but Michael seeing an opponent eight life, I mean, it's conceivable that he can just win the game right now. We see Lava Spike in hand. Ooh, and is actually going to go with an Eidolon of the okay. Great Rebel. Right. Kind of makes sense. You yeah. might need a creature to throw down and at least 
stop mm -hmm. spells and make your opponent attack, but this is definitely definitely rough, I think, as well. And you de definitely can't lava spike. You're, you don't want to lower Ashland's life total any more than you need to if you're not going to win this turn from Michael's perspective. So holding on to that seems fine. But this gives, gives her the opportunity to lower her, her life total here to if if let's see what what could happen here if ashlyn were to play a cantrip into a removal spell she would go to four and that would be a lethal attack i think there's definitely some different ways this could play out here idol of great revel versus death shadow <laughs> Boy, you really you don't want to make any mistakes. No, and you also need to be careful. Like that is it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is still a two power attacker. So you also have to account for that if you mm -hmm. were to attack with both the death shadows. I find myself personally with Idolana the Great Revel. I like fixate so much on the fact that it deals two damage every time I cast a spell that sometimes I also forget that it attacks. Um, Ragavan, though, going to be a good blocker against that. And even though it is going to deal us two damage, it does kind of open the door for these Death Shadows to attack much right. better. Here they come. So if there's a consider here, if there's no block, then, then Michael's dead, but there isn't. Or, well, there may be, but Michael blocked, so it's irrelevant. So did Ashlyn ex the time playing the Ragger event pre combat? I, so I like this. Uh, I, I think it's possible Michael doesn't block if Ashlyn doesn't play the Ragger event. Yeah, first. I was gonna say I kind of agree, actually, because I initially was like weird that we played that pre combat, but I am in agreement that the block doesn't happen if we don't play the Ragavan. So mm -hmm. I actually kind of like that maneuvering of play. All right. Michael's going to draw a card, hoping for a second three mana burn spell. Which would win the game, barring a spell pierce or some uh, some similar card from Ashlyn. Uh, but no, Michael doesn't have it. So Ashlyn Johnson will pick up game number one. Pretty short game, but certainly a lot of thought there as those life total changes when you're playing against Death Shadow and Burn. I mean, that's every little bit matters, whichever way you're swinging it. Oh, yeah. And going on to the next game. I mean, Boros has some pretty good things against that shadow. Deflecting Palm and Pat the Exile going to be good ways of handling those as well. And Sanctifier and Vec ends up being able to stay safe against a lot of the things that the uh, Grixis Death Shadow deck deploys as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you already highlighted kind of the important cards there. You see four copies of Roiling Vortex. So Michael is ready for Cascade decks. And I guess Hammer as well, sort of. You can catch late drawn Ornithopters or Mem Knights. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but, very true, very true. But yeah, for Grixis not, Death Shadow. Yeah, you know. no, you're right. Path and Deflecting Palm both seem like winners. All right. This is what I'm really kind of interested to see as well is if there's going to be anything kind of interesting here. And there is Kaito Shizuki in the sideboard of this deck. Two copies. Okay. Uh, Kaito, the Planeswalker that, let's see, you can make 1-1 one, one unblockable tokens, right? And then you, yep. you, you can loot. And if you hit your opponent, you can just draw. That's yep. is that how it works. Yeah. Okay. That's a nice one. Uh, I don't know that we'll see it here, but yeah, yeah it's I a cool card. So. <laughs> no, I agree. It's a, it's a pretty neat card. So this is a Gigantha deck. I don't remember seeing the Gigantha in play uh, on the board there, but it, I'm sure it was there somewhere. Um, yeah, those pesky companions usually end up being uh, pretty far off screen, but yeah. So I don't know. Flusterstorm sounds good. Counters against burns generally a good way to go. I don't know how excited I am about the rest. Mate, uh, you could bring in explosives because there are going to be, but if you have your own one drops, so I don't know that yeah. you're gaining much. So I guess we'll just see how game two plays out and see if we see any of the cyber cards aside from Flusterstorm in Ashland's hand. Yeah, it will be kind of interesting to see if we get to pick up on any cards that do get sideboarded. But Michael going to be on the play this time, and I do think that that kind of. Uh, you know, you always want to be on the play with Bird. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even need to tell chat that. I don't even need to tell somebody who doesn't play Magic that. 
All right, Ashland's gonna look for a little bit better hand than what the seven offered. Hey, I this the new London. Well, I guess it's not that new at this point, but the the Mulligan rule it's now. Newer. Yeah, when you when you when you say okay, we'll see how you have to change the terminology. I feel like it's weird to say oh, we'll see what their six card hand looks like. Well, mm. it's still seven though, so yeah. I don't know. This is the kind of nonsense you hear when we're waiting for you know players to finish shuffling. <laughs> All right, underway. A creature. Excellent. It turns out the burn deck likes to have some creature action. We are going to response, do a little bit of shocking to get a ragvan into play. Two Ooh. creatures. A bonanza. <laughs> And a lightning bolt to take care of your creature. This is the most Hi ideal burn start I feel like we've seen in four months. That's I actually kind of agree, especially Every... with the last at least two tournaments that we've seen burn be played in. Uh, they've had some some rough goes on yeah. on All camera. Right. Ashlyn, uh, six card hand did not include a second land, so going to be developing a little bit slowly here. And a sanctifier, so Ashley can forget about achieving delirium. I don't even know if it's maybe it's still possible, <clears throat> but it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're missing on lands, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to keep up with your opponent, especially one that keeps developing on the board and has uh, two. Boros charms in the hand with four mana. Woof. Oh, we're just going to tap for it all right now. Wham, bam. Two prowess triggers. Attack. Lots of damage. Uh, this was a uh, <clears throat> fast game. I oh, mean, and look, this there's is, a. This is kind of how we'd expect spring. them to go. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. Sulphur Springs is, in fact, a fetch land. The fetch land could get a basic, but then how? What two one drops are we trying to play yeah. to keep us in this game? So, game number two does end up going to Michael Aquino. Okay, so apparently th th those are the draws that burn players are getting off camera because they do seem to be winning matches with That's true. some consistent bases. It's just every time we put them on camera, they're like, uh, suspend Rift Ball turn one. Yep. Turn two, Lava Spike you. Go. But Burn's no, just that, a little camera shy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Swift Spear, Swift Spear, Bolt. That was an impressive start. That's certainly the start that you want to see. Uh, mm. We're going to hear from production if we are going to see game number three. Let's go to game three. Did you think we we're just going to gonna hang us out? The I don't know. We weren't going to watch the last game? This is, I don't know uh, what time at round we're in. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's true. Uh, this is game three, correct? We watched Ashland mm -hmm. win first. Okay, yep. so yeah. Ignore the little missing bubble on the screen. I'm sure it'll be fixed momentarily. But even if it's not, just pretend it's there. You know, things like Fiery Islet are just better pain lands anyway. Yeah, that's true. It by a ridiculous margin. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, I completely I, agree. I, after I agree with you, then I thought about it some more. I was like, oh, yeah, she's really right about this. Okay, <laughs> Goblin Guide reveals a, oh, uh, let's say Meyer. Sulfurous Springs. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, uh, yeah. And a Goblin Guide that's actually recognizable as itself. Even though it's still not the most pure form. Everyone's going to have, there's too many, I guess there's just, there's too many you know, splashy versions of cards now. So it's too easy to acquire them. Is that, is that your hot take of the day? If you, there's too much bling, everyone is going to be blinged out. I guess. Yeah. My feelings. I like this goblin guide. That's my favorite art of goblin guide too. Okay, Dragon Rage Channeler. Unlikely to achieve delirium this turn, so it's either attacking for one or chump blocking. So attacking for one seems like the more likely decision. Watery Grave untapped.
and across for one. Hmm. Okay, Ledger Shredder going to be the play for turn, and that does help with some blocking. And I don't know, I'd be stoked if I got to block with a Ledger Shredder and mm -hmm. not have it uh, just die before even getting to blockers. So. Right. Oh, yep. No, it's not even going to have the chance. At least that one uh, okay. gets us a land. Yeah. White border guru land. Oh. Is that a good one? <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> oh. I would have, like, even questioned if it was a guru land if I didn't feel like I could see the little, like, orange symbol in the middle of the card. So are, are you reacting to that because those are very rare or because someone's white bordered a, a regular guru land? Uh, both. Oh, so it comes either way. Yeah. They're very rare, very expensive. And it's white bordered. I don't have a problem with people whiteboarding their cards. Like okay, cards, but I'm just trying to establish whether I don't know anything about anything. I was trying to establish whether Guru Lands actually came whiteboarded or if this one oh, was, was altered no. to be whiteboarded. They, it's altered to be whiteboarded, unless some version of Guru Lands exists that I don't know about. All right. Okay, so I'm informed that this land is <laughs> All right. Ooh. All right. So if you're going to do something with style, some then things. yeah, go ahead. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Even if it's not my way of going about things, doesn't mean it's not attention grabbing and cool. All right. Yeah, you got my attention. Yeah, I could tell. I could see you. <laughs> All right. So Mrs. Bobble uh, throws a couple cards in the graveyard that Ashland does not want. Huh. This is maybe a situation. Do you just wait to get Delirium post combat so that these can block for you? Uh, I think that is a reasonable thing to go here, depending on how Ashland wants to pace this game. I mean, an attack for if they can get Delirium and send in here. Uh, okay. Well, that's probably going to change the calculus a little bit, removing one of the Goblin Guides. And wow, so still no Delirium. I'm sorry. Wait, let me check that creature. Or, no, no it's there. Do. Yeah, it's yeah. there. All right. I think the Fatal Push did it. Right. Okay, so three across. It's still one back to block. Uh, so that's a pretty good setup. And shocking. Oh, we must have a shadow. Yep. Okay. Six, six shadow. Ashton, that's seven. So Boros Charm plus a bolt will do it. There is a Boros Charm. Ooh, Michael played this line quickly. Boros Charm? Yeah. Ashlyn Johnson, do you have a counter? Oh, it looks like there is. Oh, you very much do. That's a Fluster Storm. And that might be a match-winning Fluster Storm. Yeah. Wow. Because you have to imagine that there's also one mana to do the last bit of damage. Yep, there's a Lava Spike in a hand. If that had resolved, it would have been oh. exactly seven damage with that three mana to end the game but okay well let's see Ashland. i mean can we win on this turn oh uh, michael still has a block Ooh, well, not yep. anymore. all right that does it unholy heat off the top saves ashland having to consider whatever remaining options there were there and, and does take down that match okay so death shadow dispatches burn and uh, ashland is going to speak to us so <laughs> I've got some questions, so I'm ready. All I also right. know that Ashlyn probably also got to see my reaction to her white border guru land. So, <laughs> hi, Ashlyn. How's it going? I'm pretty good. How are you guys? We're good. doing good. We're having a good time. Okay, so we're covering that match. The we we the burn player had a phenomenal game two, and just kind of blew you to pieces. But you recovered that game three. Uh, that looked pretty pretty smooth. And what were your kind of thoughts? Were you confident? In the last, like when you had that flush of storm, were you like, I got it, or were you still kind of in doubt? At that point in the game, I thought I had it locked up. Okay, but it's always pretty scary, right? Because you want to get these shadows down early, but inevitably you're gonna have to pass in situations where you could just be dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's I mean, the, and then the burn players kind of got it 
tempo there pacing because both of you are trying to let your life total down to about eight and then you want to stop there and they want it to go the rest of the way. So did you, uh, sideboarding wise, we felt like, okay, you've got fluster storms that seem good. Did you bring in anything else? So I think I misboarded game two a little bit. I boarded out four Thoughtseize for two fluster storms and I believe two Terminate. Okay. And then that was the game I just got ran over by Sanctifier in fact. Mm. And from there, I was like, okay, I, I think I probably need to bring in Dress Down just so I'm not stone cold to this. Sure. I don't really like Engineering Explosives. I think it's a bit slow and sometimes it's just bad on boards. Okay. So you brought in the Dress Down for game three for, for Sanctifier. Okay. That that makes ma makes sense. So you're 4 0. Looking good today. Uh, what's your. Uh... What's your thought on Grixis Death Shadow overall in the metagame? Do you feel like you know this is a deck that, that you want to play, or this is a deck that you feel like more people should be playing? Um, I just think it's a pretty solid deck. So usually I only play Yagma, mm -hmm. but kind of with the rise of these creativity decks, there just seems and the escape ship decks, there seems to be more run in six in the format than ever before. So I was pretty scared to register a bunch of mana dorks into that field. Fair so enough. I was kind of having a crisis about what to play for a while, just looking at lists. I saw a Grixis Death Shadow that NATO'd the Modern Challenge last weekend, and I thought his list looked pretty clean, so I just copied it. Yeah, well, you had a crisis on what to play, and you're 4-0, so that's a pretty good start. Um, how are you feeling now? We've got uh, eight rounds today. The um, what's, what's the success in this event from this point for you? Is top eight success? Is win a success? Are you after the RCQ invite or like, how are you? I don't need the RCQ invite. Okay. I locked that up pretty early, but I mean, success is winning the tournament, right? Sure. No, absolutely. Well, good luck. I mean, you can't have started any better than you did. So maybe we'll catch you later around today or, or hopefully tomorrow morning. All right. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ashlyn Johnson with Grixis nice. Death Shadow 4 0 to start the day. All right, Becky Bell. Well, I gotta say that looked fairly impressive. Uh, I thought uh, I thought her answers to the questions, like she knows what she's talking about. Like, you know, maybe okay, yeah, maybe you missed it for game two, but you corrected it based on on what you saw and what you experienced. I mean, not to say that it's wrong, but she felt it was wrong. And, no, uh, and and it also takes a really good player actually to realize that you did something wrong, admit to it and then figure out how to make it better. A lot of players yeah. just like, especially if you like copy a list from somebody, usually yeah. the people who copy lists go and then like also look at sideboard guides and then like don't ever divert from those or try to like do the same sideboard strategies for slightly similar decks that maybe don't actually have similar sideboard strategies. So hmm. really like impressive to see a player make adaptations intuitively and on the spot. Yeah, okay, so. We are through four rounds. The Swiss is halfway done, but our coverage rolls along. Becky and I will be back for round five in a few minutes. Stick around.